Welcome back you guys. Today we're going to be doing a basic beginner's eyeshadow application. I'm going to show you guys some easy steps on how to apply eyeshadow. So if you're a beginner, I feel like this video is going to be perfect for you because I'm going to give you lots of tips and tricks for applying eyeshadow and making your eyeshadow game look strong. So let's begin. Okay, so I get it. Eyeshadow can be a little bit daunting if you're trying to apply eyeshadow and you go into the store and you're trying to find brushes, you have no idea what to pick. So I'm gonna give you three basic eyeshadow brushes that I think you need to have in your collection. The first one that you guys see here are some couple different variations, but these are large blending brushes. They're gonna be your base brush to kind of blend everything out, put color all over your lid. The next one is a tapered blending brush. Again, you guys are like, why do these look kind of similar? They are sort of similar, but these are gonna be a little bit smaller. These are still gonna give you a little bit of blend, but they're also going to be a little more precise. And if you guys are trying to figure out, I really don't see a whole lot of difference. I'm gonna do an up close version. The one on the far right is your larger blending brush, and the one on the smaller is your more tapered blending brush. And as you guys can see, when you do a side by side, the large blending brush is just a little bit fluffier. It's gonna apply color on a larger scale versus the tapered blending brush that's gonna give you a little bit more pointed, more precise color into the crease area. So you wanna focus that large blending brush more for all over placement, and then the smaller tapered brush for more precise placement. And the last brush I would recommend would be a flat shader brush. So many brands make so many different variations. These are a few that I have in my collection, but a flat shader brush is basically going to put the color onto the lid. And that is a brush that I find to be a very easy brush to find anywhere. So when it comes down to it, I truly think that you could get away with these three brushes. Now I'm sure some of you guys are like, but there's so many different ones. If you were starting out with eyeshadow or you're just applying makeup and you're a beginner at it, start off with these three and you can really get away with applying eyeshadow and then slowly build your collection from there. So when we're looking at eyeshadow palettes, the one I'm gonna use today is the NARS Skin Deep Eyeshadow Palette. Whatever palette you have will work perfectly fine. Although this is the one I chose because I do like that it has a lot of matte shades and it has those larger pan sizes. Now, when you're looking at your eyeshadow palette, there's a couple of things that I like to recommend that you look for. Number one, a brow bone shade. Whether it's going to be a very light cream shade or even something with a little bit of a satin finish, this shade is just going to enhance your more highlight areas like your brow bone or your inner corner. It's always good to have something like this because I do find that it helps kind of open up the eyes even if you pop it right on the lid. The next shade you're going to look for is something what we call a transition shade which is going to be something that is very similar to your skin tone or most likely the next color or next step up from your brow bone shade. You want something that is light enough to run all over your lid, but still just a little bit of color so you can see that there's a little bit of shade difference. In this particular palette, I could recommend that there might be two, but again, there's never a wrong answer, you guys. Just remember that this color that you're gonna be using is going to be blown out all over your lid. It is going to be the base color that is going to help transition everything over to the next couple of colors. Then we move into the crease color. Now the crease color is very dependent on what you would like to use in your crease. There's a couple of different variations in here that you could definitely choose from. Just from looking at it, I would say the two middle ones could be something you could use in the crease, and even so, that darkest uh, chocolate brown that you have down there. So keep that in mind when you're looking at an eyeshadow palette. It's good to have a brow bone shade, a transition shade, and a crease shade. So let's take, for example, if we were looking at the Soft Glam Palette by Anastasia. For instance, I would take Tempera as the brow bone shade or even the inner corner if you wanted to highlight uh, and then for like the all over shade I would like something like orange soda I find something like this shade you know still light enough and it'll be a really good transition shade even burnt orange and then the rest of the matte shades in my opinion could definitely be crease shades so you kind of want to build up the order this palette is pretty big but if you are working with something in this similarity in the size I feel like you'll have a lot more options to play around with so I wanted to give you a variation there and then I wanted to move into the Naked Honey palette because I've been 
playing with that palette a lot and I thought maybe you guys might want to see another variation. So for this palette, I would say Flyby would be a really great brow bone color. Then even more so, you got a couple of transition shades. I would definitely recommend Sweet, Swarm, and even Keeper. And then I would probably say in the crease area, you could throw Hive, Drip, and Sting. I really enjoyed this palette because I do find that this is like such a great beginner's palette for people. So now that we're done talking about palettes, we're gonna move into the actual application. Using the NARS palette, I'm gonna go ahead and use that to set my lid. I'm gonna take that cream shadow and I'm just setting the concealer because I do have concealer to even out my skin on my eyes. If you don't have a cream shadow to work with in your palette, just use some loose powder because you do want your eyes to be set. As a beginner, I definitely recommend this. Now I'm just showing you guys the motion that I'm going to use, which is in small circular motions around the eyes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with that light brown shade, which we call the transition shade. It was our first shadow, your lightest shadow. And I'm just going to buff that all around the eyes. Since this color is so much lighter, you can definitely be a little less precise on where you put this because this is our first shadow. This is going to help blend out those darker shadows. So I do recommend taking this and kind of buffing it as you can see, small circular motions and still going in a circular motion. So it's small circles in a big circle. And as you can see, if you have a little bit of a hood to your eye or if you have any sort of flap to your eye, I like to do this because I find that this method gives me a nice clean slate. So I like to tilt my head and then I use a compact mirror. And as you can see, I'm kind of looking downward at an angle just so my eye is flat. And I find that that really helps me get the nice blend that I'm looking for. Another method that I use quite often is just slightly pulling my eyebrow up just a little bit. If you guys can see right on the inner corner, I tend to get a little bit of not, it's, there's not a flap, but it's just a little bit difficult for my brush to get in there without getting splotchy. So I will take my finger and just slightly lift it up. And again, that helps me get a nice blend on my lid. Now I'm just going to go ahead and blend everything out, making sure that everything looks the way I want it to. So we can move on to the next step. Now you're gonna choose your crease shade, and this is the shade that's gonna deepen everything up on the outer corner. Make sure to dab it on the back of the eyeshadow palette so you don't have any excess product. And what I like to do is in case there's any mess ups or I don't know how pigmented a palette is, I will start and apply it right on the outer corner up against the lash line. So that way I don't have to worry about getting any splotchiness. Then I'm gonna start in little small circular motions, keeping the brush on the outer corner of the eye, and I'm gonna start packing on that color as well as blending it out. When I do this, I like to slowly bring my eye just slightly open so I can see exactly how high this color is going to come above my crease. I want it to come above my crease, but not as high as the first color. So what I'm gonna do is just take it and slowly build the color. This can take a little bit of time depending on how pigmented your shadow is, but my recommendation again is to do the same motions that you would with the very first shade, but this time you don't wanna take it as high and you wanna keep your eye open just a little bit. Just to finalize everything on your lid, once you've decided that you enjoy what you see, go ahead and take your flat, your not your flat, your big fluffy brush and just make sure everything is cohesive and blended out together. So now we're gonna finish off with the lid shade. We're gonna be taking any lid shade that you want and we're just gonna start packing that onto the lid. You wanna to try to blend it into the outer corner because you want those two shadows to kind of mesh well. So you will have to take your flat shader brush and still hold on to that smaller brush that you were just previously working with and continue going back and forth with these two brushes to blend that outer corner. So again, just tap your brush when you go back in with that darker shadow, kind of dab it on the outer corner, try to kind of, you know, blend it in together on the edges, then go back in with the shader again until you get that nice cohesive blend. And then to finish off, I'm literally just going to take that same shader brush and run it on my lower lash line. And that really is all there is to it, you guys. Apply some mascara and then some falsies if you guys are willing and daring. And otherwise than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know down below what you guys would like to see. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye.